Imagine you are a nonprofit organization called the Robotics Museum. For each of your donors, you want to send a consolidated statement, the name of the donor, their address, the total amount of their donations, a detailed listing of their donations, and you want to email that to them automatically. The data for this comes from an Excel file that has information for all donors. This Excel file has several columns that start with a space in the column header, and those columns would be available to drive the emailing process or any other aspects, but will not be included in the tabular information that you see in the end result. Visual Cut would take this data from Excel and flow it into a Word template for each one of these donors. The Word template looks like this. There are dynamic tokens that match the names of the columns in Excel. The name column, the surname column, the address. There's also an automatically generated token for a sum for the amount column. And the table that you see here simply holds some sample data. That data would be replaced by the data from the Excel file for each donor. The formatting would be maintained. Any extra empty rows would be removed and the end result would be saved to a dynamically named Word file, one for each donor. Visual Cut would then convert that Word file to a PDF file like you see on the right hand side. Again, one for each donor and Visual Cut would be able to email that file to the donor. So here's Visual Cut. I'll launch donations.xlsx. I'm targeting sheet one, cell A1, which is the top corner of our data source, and bursting by the email column, which causes our five rows to be grouped into the two donations by Amor and the three donations by Andy. When I click OK, all the data is parsed, and the first row and the last row within each one of these two groups gets its own tokens. Visual Cut detected that we have two groups and for a more, the group first, which is the data from the first row within the group for the email column is amore.taulis at ab.com. I can embed that token in the email too, as you see here, and that's why it reflects that dynamic information. When I select Andy, that token returns the address for Andy and the email would go to that person. I have an email service that is stopped because I don't want to actually send those emails, but I would be able to process them. They would appear in an outgoing folder and I'll be able to see them. The process generated two tables. One is the HTML table group and the other one is the word replace table, which is the content for merging into the table in the word template. But right now, let's focus on the HTML table group. It is embedded inside the email message. Now that message is an HTML message, so we will use the HTML editor. Notice that Andy Weir, the second group value, is selected currently on the outside here. So if I preview, I see the dynamic information for Andy. If I go up to the previous group value by clicking on this scroller, I get the information for a more. And let's go back to Andy. So these two different messages can be now sent. Let's do that. I'll start the process. The two emails got created. So I'll open the message for a more and the information for Andy. And you can see that the dynamic information is there. Let's turn our attention to doing the mail merge into the Word template. I'll turn on the export format of Word replace tags and the option to burst. Now I'm going to generate a dynamically named Word document for each donor. This dialog allows me to specify what is the template document for generating those files. And that template file is the one that we saw earlier. One other thing to notice is that I'm also taking the Word file that gets generated and I'm converting it to a PDF file. I'm going to take the path to the PDF file that's going to get created and copy it 
and paste it into the attach option so I will attach the PDF file rather than the Word file. I'll start the process. This warns me that I'm attaching a PDF file which is not the same as the Word file that I'm exporting to. That's fine. And now you can see that there's an extra step of doing Word replace tags and Word to PDF conversion and finally the emailing. So if I look at the generated emails and open one of them, I would see that there's a PDF attachment. And if I open that PDF attachment, here's a nice looking PDF with information for Amour. Now let's close these and double click to open the export folder. And here are the four files that got generated the Word document for each donor, and the PDF file. Here is a review and a few key points worth mentioning. First, if the Excel dataset includes rows that you want to exclude, all you need to do is include a column with a column header of space include and a formula for each row that returns either true or false rows with a value of false would be automatically excluded. Also, while the demonstration was interactive, you can also trigger this process from a command line, from any other application, and you can also schedule the process. Finally, Visual Cut has several other interesting features when it comes to using Excel data. You can turn your Excel information into interactive web schedules, web grids, and web pivot tables and charts. I will place a link to a video demo of these features in the description below.